Tonight on Global National, getting aid to earthquake-ravaged Nepal. Relief workers are rushing to help the survivors and prevent disease. The quake triggered an avalanche on Everest and a Toronto man barely made it out. He was just under base camp when the avalanche hit. But an Ottawa woman is still missing. And the biggest hospital move in Canada. Can I see your hospital bracelet, please? How it all went off without a hitch. Global National with Robin Gill. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin tonight with the crisis in Nepal where 2,500 people have died in an earthquake. Relief agencies from around the world are trying to get food and medical supplies to those who survived the 7.8 magnitude quake. But landslides have blocked access to some communities and there is concern over the spread of disease in a country with poor infrastructure. As Mike Licatua reports, Canada is among the many nations offering help. A scene all too common in Kathmandu. Rescuers carefully search toppled homes while loved ones wait anxiously, praying for a sign of life. Inside, there is hope. Crews locate a man trapped in the rubble. He's pinned under the body of another man who didn't survive. Minutes later, relief and applause as he's removed from the building. That man was taken to hospital where hundreds of others recover from their injuries. Like many people who are serious are suffering from head injuries and the chest injuries, spine injuries, abdominal injuries. At every bedside, someone prays for a speedy recovery. So many in this country live in poverty. It's hard to believe they could be worse off, but now they are. My father got injured. I lost my daughter. I broke my leg. It's very difficult now, he says. I have nothing with me. The focus is on survivors. The dead are left in the streets as family members weep and mourn. Strong aftershocks continue to rock the country, one measuring 6.7 in magnitude. Just a week ago, experts gathered in Nepal saying a massive quake was imminent calling it a nightmare waiting to happen because the country's poor infrastructure wouldn't hold up. We tried our best um, to what we, can, we could do, but still the resources are not enough, uh, technical resources, other resources are not uh, enough to prepare the sites of earthquake. At the airport, people are desperate to leave, many sleeping in the open air, waiting to go anywhere. Meantime, foreign aid is already trickling in. This cargo plane from neighboring India was the first on the ground. Canada has pledged $5 million and our disaster assistance response team known as DART will be heading to the region. The remote areas are the hardest hit, but also the hardest to get to. UNICEF says nearly 1 million children are in urgent need. That's why aid agencies are also rushing to Nepal, bringing clean drinking water, medical supplies and other essentials to get people back on their feet again. But they too are dealing with an unstable environment. Yeah, we said first uh, to focus on Kathmandu because that's, uh, yeah, that's something we can handle at the moment. It's trembling. I'm going outside. I'm really sorry. Bye. Those aftershocks are so bad, few can return to their severely damaged homes. So a tent city has sprung up in the main square. Many here too young to comprehend the tragedy and hopefully too young to remember it. Mike LeCouture, Global News, Ottawa. The earthquake triggered an avalanche on Mount Everest at a time when many tourists were taking part in treks. A Toronto man was among them. He barely managed to escape the debris that came down around him. His family is relieved he made it out alive. But as Arthi Pohl reports, another family is waiting to hear from an Ottawa woman who is still missing. Broken but alive. Injured climbers from Mount Everest transported back to Kathmandu. The ground is shaking. When the earth shook on Saturday and again on Sunday, part of the world's highest peak came toppling down. Whoa, whoa. Avalanches and landslides rushed toward base camps, Sherpas, tourists running for their lives. We 
just felt some fresh tremors here. Big pieces of ice just came down from this glacier today. Officials estimate at least 1,000 climbers were at base camps when the earthquake struck. April is one of the most popular times to scale Everest. It was a year ago that the mountain recorded its deadliest day, 16 people killed in an avalanche. Today, in the aftermath of the earthquake, 17 have been confirmed dead so far, including U.S. Google executive Dan Fredenberg. Video showing the 33-year-old a week ago was posted on Twitter. This is where all the things we have. Faye Kennedy from Ottawa was trekking in Langtang National Park when the earthquake hit. Her family now desperate for news she's okay. The shelter there, um, the, 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 tea, the tea houses have been flattened and this is where the trekkers are supposed to be staying. They're calling on the Canadian government to mobilize all necessary resources to track down Kennedy and other Canadians still missing. Rescue efforts continue and many are trapped on the mountain. He was just under base camp when the avalanche hit. The family of Canadian Dylan Sartor relieved to hear he managed to escape when the earthquake struck. He sent these photos to Global News, saying he and his guide had stopped for lunch when they started to feel the rumble. They rushed for the door past tables and chairs that had flipped over. They hiked for hours to get to safety. He sent me three texts this morning. They all woke me up, basically saying I'm alive, barely, and it's a mess up here, but I'm okay. Sartor is now volunteering in Nepal, where help is needed now more than ever. The devastation is on the ground and thousands of meters up. Arthi Pol, Global News, Washington. This is the worst earthquake to hit Nepal in 80 years. In 1934, an 8.1 magnitude quake centered near Mount Everest, and it killed more than 10,000 people. Compared to other disasters in the past decade, in 2010, an earthquake in Haiti killed more than 160,000 people. The 2008 earthquake in China left 80,000 people dead. And in 2005, an estimated 80,000 people died in Pakistan's earthquake.